everybody, this is the Pre-AP Test 3-2 review to prepare you for the upcoming test. All right, so um, let's go over some of these questions so you could be well prepared. So what do you need to know for Test 3-2? You have to know your integer operations. So we had four questions here, negative 5 plus negative 8 plus 7. So if you remember from the past, you draw 5 negatives plus 8 more negatives plus 7 positives. What happens when you have a negative and a positive? It makes zero pair. So what remains? Negative 6. 7 minus negative 5. If you remember, what number do we first see? We see a 7. What is the opposite of negative 5? Positive 5. So 7 plus 5 is 12. What's three groups of negative 9? That means you have one group that had negative 9, another group that had negative 9, and a third group that had negative 9. How many negatives would you be able to count? You would have 27 negatives. As a reminder, 3 times 9 is 27. Negative means opposite, so negative 27. And then 36 divided by 4 is 9. This opposite of a negative is positive. So if you have two negatives, when you're multiplying and dividing, opposite of a negative is positive. 5 through 10. Do you know your equivalency? How would you write 18%? First of all, what is a percent? A percent, again, is out of 100, per 100. So I write the percent, 18%, as a in fraction form, 18 per 100. Can I simplify this? Yes, I can. I can divide the numerator and the denominator by 2, and so it can also be written as 9 50th or 1800. How would you write 7 hundredths in fraction form? 7 out of 100, which is 7%. And if you're given a fraction test just as 17 25th, how would you write that as a fraction, as a decimal and a percent? Again, we need to build this to a percent, which is out of 100. What is the relationship between 25 to 100 times 4? So 17 times 4 is 6,800, or 68%. So what else do you need to know? So taking what we just learned about fraction decimal percents, can you now answer a real-world question such as this. The table shows the portion of a weekday four students used to build a website. Jamal, 29.4%, Andy, 37.6%, Ernesto, 31.25th, and Blake, 3 tenths. Put them in order from greatest to least. Do you like working with fractions, decimals, or percents? Decide what is your favorite. I like, personally myself, I like working with percents. So these two are done. We'll leave those alone. So we know Andrew is greater than Jamal. So what, first of all, what can you tell me about this fraction, 31 25th? Isn't this going to be more than one whole or more than 100%? So without even doing the math, you should know that this would probably be the greatest. But if you really want to know, how do you build this to 100% times 4? 124%. And what is another way to say 3 tenths? as a decimal, if you write it in the hundreds place, 30 hundreds, 30 percent. So we have 124 percent, 37.6 percent, 30 percent, so 29.4 percent. So again, you earn, to earn the test, you've got to know how to put numbers in order from least to greatest or greatest to least. Decide, do you like working with fractions, decimal, or percent? What else do you need to know for the test? You need to know how to graph points or an order pair. So this is called the origin, the home base, represented by 0, 0. This is the x-axis. On the x-axis, negatives are to the left, positives are to the right. This is the y-axis. Positives are above, negatives are to below. So you always graph the x before the y. You go either left or right, then up and down. Phoenicia graph point G on the coordinate grid. She will graph point H at a location five units away from point G. So as you can tell, 
point A, I dropped in red, point B, I dropped in C, the different colors. So we're not to figure out which one is five units away. So first of all, it says C. Let's make sure. So starting at the oranges, I go one over, which is to the right. Three means above. Is this five units away? Let's count. One, two, three, four. C is five units away. This is only two units away. This is four units away. And this one is going to go left and above. So what else do you know for the upcoming test? You need to know how to multiply and divide fractions and multiply and divide decimals. So what do you remember about multiplying fractions? Well, one fourth is a fraction. How can I rewrite three and a half in fraction form? Do you remember three times two is six plus one is seven half. So when you multiply fractions, again, we did learn this, you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators and you get seven eighths. How do you divide fractions? First of all, is three and two thirds written in fraction form. This would be three times three is nine plus two is 11 thirds. Then you need to do the reciprocal. Do you remember this? So you write 11 thirds, but then we need to flip the reciprocal. What is, if I flip one third and do reciprocal, it would be three one. So you multiply the numerators, multiply the numbers, so that'd be three thirds to the whole number of 11. So again, for example, what if you saw this? Like um, two fifths divided by one fifth. How many one fifths go into two fifths? So you keep two fifths, you times it. What's the reciprocal of one fifth? Five one. So that'd be ten fifths or just two. Two groups of one fifth goes into two fifths. So how do you divide decimals? It's been a while since some of y'all have last done this. So I don't like working with decimals myself. So do you remember you have to write this as a fraction, 3.36 divided by 0 and 2400. So 3 and 3600 divided by 0 and 2400. Do they, have, do they share the same place value? Yeah, the hundreds place. So if you multiply by 100, then the whole number would be 336. The whole number of this would be 24. So isn't this just a regular division problem? 336 divided by 24 is 14. So what if your question was like this? Three and two tenths divided by four tenths. And three and two tenths divided by four tenths. Multiply it by the tenths place. So that'd be 32 over four divided by four, which is just eight. And then here you just multiply decimals, just multiply as you see it. And then how many places come behind the decimal point? Three places. So we jump it three places. I like estimating. Eight and fifty one hundred is close to nine. Seventeen and fourteen tenths is close to seventeen. If you multiply this, you'll get one hundred fifty three, and this is about one fifty three. That's how you know where to put the decimal point. So what else do you need to know? So let's do some real world question using operations. The table shows the prices of some breakfast item at a restaurant. Sarah ordered two eggs. So one egg cost $1.69, so she ordered two eggs. $1.69, $1.69. Then she ordered a slice of bacon for $1.49. Then she ordered a glass of orange juice for $1.09. Then she has to pay some tax of $0.48. Cents. So, so far she spent, if you add this up, she spent $6.44. She paid for her breakfast with a $10 bill. How much change will she receive? So $10 minus $6.44 is $3.00. And so number 18. So what else do you need to know about cutting test? Proportion, using rates, finding a pattern. In the morning, a farm worker packs three pints of strawberry every four minutes. That's the morning. Three strawberries every four minutes. So that means they can do six strawberries in eight minutes nine strawberries in 12 minutes, and so on. Then in the afternoon, I guess they get tired or something, they only do two straw pints of strawberries every three minutes. So four pints of strawberry in six minutes, six pints of strawberry in nine minutes, and continue the pattern. 
What was the difference between her morning and afternoon passing rate per hour? So what is another way to say hour? Well, one hour is the same as saying 60 minutes. So how do you build four minutes to 60 minutes times it by 15? So that means they could do 45 strawberries in 60 minutes. In the afternoon, how do you build three, three minutes to 60 minutes times 20? That means they could do 40 strawberries. So can they do more strawberries in the morning? You bet. They could do 45 strawberries in 60 minutes, but in the afternoon, they can only do 40 strawberries in 60 minutes. So they can do five more strawberries per hour. So 19, using tables again, Fei Yang dog eats eight ounces of dog food each day. So you could make a table like this way. Day ounces. One day, eight ounces. Two days, 16 ounces. Three days, 24 ounces. Four days, uh, 32 ounces. Five days, 40 ounces, and blah, blah, blah. How many eight ounces will a 28 pound bag last you? Well, if you look at your mathematics chart, which you will be given during the test, each pound is worth 2,000 pounds. We don't really know that. Each pound is worth 16 ounces. So I'm going to use this one right here. So one pound is worth 16 ounces. If you buy a 28 pound bag, how many ounces would that be? What is the relationship between one pound to 28 pounds times 28? 16 times 28 is 448 ounces. So this huge bag, which is 28 pounds, contains 448 ounces. So how can I divide this into groups of eight ounces? So if I have 448 ounces, how many servings or days will this take? Well, the relationship is times eight or divide eight. So I'm going to divide a 448 divided by eight, so I get 56. There's another way to do it. I don't know if anybody did it this way. Of course, someone would have done it this way. Isn't eight ounces half, uh, eight ounces is half of a pound. So that means each pound you can feed two times. So if there are 28 pounds, you can feed each pound twice. 28 times two is 56 servings. 20. So the next part is thing that we have learned recently, like percent. You will be seeing several questions over percent application during the test. So a shop owner offer a 20% discount off the regular price of meal. So again, you may use a table, you may use pictures. If this is 0% and this is 100% because if this is fully charged, it's 100%. So he only offer a 20% discount. So not the 100%, that would have been free then, right here, 20%. The amount of discount is $3. What is the full regular price? So if I did a picture such as this, hmm, what's the relationship? So every 20%, you save $3. How many groups of 20% goes to 100% times five? So this would be $15. Another way to check in though is 100% divided by, if I could break this down into groups of 10%, 100% divided by 10% is divided by 10. So 15 divided by 10 is $1.50. So 20% is $3. And that's how I could calculate it. Several ways you can do it. All right. What if you don't like this? What if you prefer something called table? Well, we total always with a bottom. How do you write 20% as a fraction? 20 out of 100. So this represents the total of price. So do we know the total price? No. We leave this blank. So three goes on top. Can you you could do a side to side relationship? Does twenty go in three? Not quite. Let's do an up and down relationship. How do you turn a twenty to a hundred times five? Three times five is fifteen. But if you want to do a side to side relationship, you could divide by twenty, divide by twenty, and get one fifth. How do you build one to three times three times three and you get fifteen? So every twenty percent is three dollars. So a hundred percent would be 
with two dollars. So let's practice more percent. Yesterday, 40% of the 425 guests at a hotel called for room service. How many guests called for room service? So let's do a picture. Here's a picture. 100% is right here. That is 425 guests. So the, the hotel holds 425 guests. 40% would be what? So I'm going to break it down into groups of 10%. How do you break down 100% to 10%? Divide by 10. So what's 425 divided by 10? 425 divided by 10 is four groups. Two groups. So that's a zero. 42.5. How do you build 10% to 40% times 4? So 42.5 times 4, 20. Five, four times five is 20, 42. Four times two is eight, times two is 10, 21. It's 176. Another way you can do it is, how do you write 40% as a fraction? 40 out of 100. How do you build 100 to 425 guests? Times 4.25, 40 times 4.25 is 170. All we know is that every 10% is or we can do it mental math. 100% is 425. How do you break it down to 10%? Divide by 10, which is 42.5. How do you build it back up to 40% times 4? 170. 22. More about percent. Yes, this test is, if you haven't figured out by now, it's going to have several questions. No, not several, many questions about percent. The price of a laptop was increased. From 200 to 40. Maybe they got more expensive. It must have been for sale and back to regular price, who knows? By what percentage did it increase? So it increased $40. So what was the original? What was the starting price? 200. So 40 over 200. How can I build this to a percent of 100% divided by 2? So it had a 20% increase. So check your work. 100% is 200, 10% is 20, 20% 20 times 2 is 40. So did you go up $40? Yes, it did. 23. So one thing you're going to see on the test is called prime factorization. Can you break up prime, break up a number into prime numbers? Do you know the first five prime numbers? If you know the prime numbers, it really does help you. Some prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, skip 9, and go straight to 11. So what prime number goes right here? Well, there are many ways to do it. One way you do it is multiply this time and figure out. 2 times, how do you say this is a two-bit multiplication? 3 times 3. 2 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is what? Wait, two, stop. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. So what do I multiply 18 by to get 90? I will multiply how many 18s go into 90? 5 groups. 5 is the missing number. Or you can do it this way. Can you break 90 down into manageable numbers? 2 times 45. Can you break down 45? 3 times 15. Can you break 15 down? 3 times 5. So which number is missing? 5 is the missing number. So 24, you will have to do order operations during the test. You'll see several questions over order operation. Again, as you remember, we always highlight the addition or subtraction operator. It breaks it into simpler expressions. So in this problem, 16 plus 2 times 36. So let me get my highlighter. Here is the addition operator. So what do you see on the left side? I see a 16. What do you see on the right side? 72. 16 plus 72 would be 88. So which one of these will equal the number equivalent to 16 plus 2 times 36, or 88? 
Let's look at A. Two, how do you say this repeated multiplication? Two times two times two times two is 16. So it could be A. Could be B, because that's two times two times two is eight. Cannot be B. So it's either A or C. Next one. So plus two times 36 is 72. Which one on the right side? The left side has to be 16. The right side has to be 72. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Two times two times two is eight. Three times three is nine. Eight times nine is seventy-two. Hold it up. I think the answer is A. I think I got this one wrong. Two times two is four. Three times three is minus thirty-six. But it has to be seventy-two on the right side. How embarrassing. I even have the work right here. 2 to the power 3 times 3 is A. 24 should have been A. 25. Shay wrote the following work expression. 5 groups of Y plus 2 plus 4 to show the amount of money 5 cents paid for stacks of the baseball game. Right? A simplified expression equivalent. So I'm going to draw this. 5 groups of Y plus 2. So let's draw 5 groups of Y plus 2 plus 4. So how many groups of Y did I draw? 5 groups of Y. How many positives did I draw? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's 5Y plus 4. Another way to say it is 5 groups of Y plus 5 groups of 2 plus 4 more will add up to 14. 26. Which two expressions are equivalent? So let's look at this. Nine groups of six plus x. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to draw nine groups of this. What pain in the butt? Four groups, five groups, six groups, seven groups, eight groups, nine groups. So, let's see. Is it the same as saying 9 groups of 6? Yeah. Do you see 9x? Oh, A is the answer. Let's see why B, C, and D are not correct. X plus, what's X plus 7? 72. X plus 8. And then you have to, oh, that's 9 groups of X plus 8. That's not going to be, you're not going to be drawing X 9 times, so B is off. 8 times 6 is 48, 48 divided by x. This is 8x's divided by 6. No, that's not correct. All right, this one. 6 groups, so 6 groups, 6x's, six plus 3. Is that the same as 6 groups of x plus 3? Do these pictures look the same to you? I think not. So another way, a shortcut way, is using actual numbers. Can you give me a number for x? I know in my 8th period class, they love using the number 10. Fine, I will use 10. 6 plus, oh, let me use 10 for my 8th period, 10. 6 plus 10 is 16. All right, now I'm not going to go like 10. Now I know why I don't like 10. Because sometimes when you do it, you're making it harder. Let's use 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. 9 groups of 7 is 63. 9 times 6 is 54. Plus 9 groups of 1 is 9. That equals 63. That's why A is correct. 27. And the rest of them is multiple representation. We will be learning this at the later end of our stuff. So in here, can you... Read this to me. So you're given a, a graph. Can you fill in the table? So one balloon pop will give you 25 points. Two balloon pop will give you 50 points. 
30 balloons, top blue key, 75 points, four balloons, top blue key, 100 points. Can you, so we completed the table, name the dependent thing. So to do dependent and independent, think of something depends on something. What depends on what? Does the number of points depends on how many balloons are popped? Or does the number of balloons popped depends on number of points? No, that doesn't make sense. The number of balloon, a number of points that you can get depends on number of balloons popped. So that means the dependent is number of points. And then the independent is number of balloons. But there is a shortcut. You may have learned it in science class. Maybe you do prefer this called something called dry mix. The dependent will always be the y-axis. The independent is always the x-axis. So dependent is that. Independent is that. So the quite next question, using the graph and table, write an equation that best represents the relationship. So what is the relationship between 1 to 25, 2 to 50? It is times 25. So it's multiplicative. So how would you write this equation? What are you multiplying? You're multiplying y equals some people write it as x times 25. That's theoretically correct, but we would like to write more simpler 25 groups of x. So 25x or 25 groups of x. So y equals 25x. Let's do another one. Given this graph, can you make a table, dependent, independent, and write an equation? So in filling age, 3h, so x axis is filling age, y axis is the Patrick, and then Patrick is 5. When Dylan is 5, Patrick is 7. When Dylan is 7, Patrick would be 9. So what depends on what? Patrick's age depends on what Dylan is. Because once you know what Dylan is, then you'll know what Patrick is. So Patrick is the dependent. Independent is Dylan age. Again, the science you may have used learned something called dry mix. Dependent is the y-axis. Independent is the x-axis. So what is the relationship? How do you, what's the relationship between 3 to 5? 5 to 7 is the same way. Plus 2, y equals x plus 2. It is add on. And that is our final. Um, that is getting ready for your test 3-2.